Hi everyone, my name is Justin Nodisho, and in this Adobe Premiere Pro CC tutorial, I'm going to show you how to edit your stationary shots to create a fake handheld camera movement. So before I start this tutorial, I just want to say if you're not following me on Instagram and Twitter, definitely go follow me. All the links are in the description. If you guys want to stay up to date with what's going on in the channel and have an easy place to reach out to me. Also, if you've been watching along but you're not subscribed to the channel yet, then definitely subscribe below. I've got a lot of good things coming and on the way. So getting into this effect, you can see I have a clip on my timeline that's ready, and it's just a stationary shot, either on a tripod or with the camera set down somewhere. And there's nothing wrong with these type of shots, but hopefully this technique can give you some ideas to have a little bit of fun and flexibility, whether you're shooting on your own and you don't have anyone to hold it for you, or just to keep it in your toolkit for whatever situation. So in order to do this, it's actually pretty simple. Click and highlight your clip, move over all the way to the beginning, and let's head over to the effects control panel. Here we can see ways that we can adjust the position, scale, and all types of motion adjustments. So first, we want to zoom into the clip a little bit to give ourselves some room to work with. So anywhere between 105 or 110 should be fine and not cut off too much of the clip or lose much quality. Next, head over to the position slider and toggle the stopwatch icon on to create keyframes. This is gonna allow us to adjust from one movement to the next smoothly. So beginning our effect, let's think about what an actual handheld camera movement looks like. Usually a person's breathing in and out and their hands are going up and down. So you're gonna get a slight bounce up and down, but very gently. So let's pull the Y position upwards a little bit so that we reach the top. You just wanna make sure you don't get to the point where you start to see a black bar because you don't have enough clip. That's why we increase the scale. I'm also going to adjust the X position or the horizontal movement and then make it slightly to the right. Next, let's move over a second or two in the keyframe or timeline scrubber. And now let's move downward. So I'll adjust the Y position back down so that you can see some bottom parts of the clip again. And then I'll adjust the X position a bit over to the other side. Now what I'll do is just repeat this one or two times. So I'll go over again. I'll create some upward movement, maybe some movement to the right. And then I'll go over again. I'll create some downward movement and some movement to the left a bit. If you want, you can even experiment with adding a little bit of rotation adjustment to add to the variation of the movement. So if I go back to the beginning, I can toggle the stopwatch for rotation just the same and then move over a bit and maybe just use one or two degrees of rotation you really don't want to get too crazy here, like a really shaky camera, if that's not what you want. And also make sure you don't get the black lines on the side and rotate it too far. But I'll move one degree of rotation and then maybe go back to zero. So really barely any. Now let's play that back and see how it looks and feels so we can adjust it if needed. So in my case, I feel like it's moving too slow. It doesn't feel like a natural breath. So I'm going to squeeze these in just a little bit to get a little bit more natural movement. So in my opinion, this feels a lot better at this slightly faster pace, but I still notice there's a bit of jerkiness from moving up and down. So I'm actually gonna click this arrow button to move to that exact keyframe, and I'm gonna adjust it so that it's not such an extreme difference. So I'll pull it back up a little bit, and then maybe this one, I'll pull it back down a little bit. So we're not moving so far up and down and you can't see it directly switch angles. All right, so I've went back and I've fine-tuned things to be a lot more subtle. I didn't make the differences between the position sliders as extreme between keyframes, and I also pushed things together to feel at a more natural pace. Now, once you've gone through and created about four or five or six of these little keyframes and created a natural movement, you can actually just copy those and then move over and paste them with Command-C and Command-V so that you can replicate it over long portions of the entire clip without having to do each separate keyframe. Just remember the more initial keyframes you make for randomization, the less robotic it'll look. So let's play that back and see what that whole clip looks like. So you can see I've got a pretty subtle up and down hand movement. It makes it feel a little bit more handheld and it gives you the flexibility to fake a camera movement if you need to or if you want to. It's always good to keep in your pocket. Now you can save this as a preset. I know someone's gonna ask, can I save this as a preset? Because who wants to do these keyframes every single time? Yes, you can. Just right click the motion, save as preset, 
and you can save it as whatever you want. If you type scale, it'll scale the keyframes to ho however long a clip is, but rather you should do it anchor to endpoints, and then if you need to do it on a longer clip, just copy and paste the keyframes a couple times. But once you save it as a preset, you should see it in your effects panel on the right hand side in your presets folder as whatever you named it as. So motion preset, and you can click and drag it on other clips. So if you guys enjoyed this tutorial on how to create a fake handheld camera shake, then definitely leave a like on it. Let me know what you thought in the comments below and subscribe to my channel if you're not to stay tuned for all my future videos. Once again, you can follow me on social media at Justin Odisho if you want to reach out, ask questions, or just say hi. And once again, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.